Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Michael Cicerno, De Cerno. De Cero. De Cero. So I was, I, as I was opening up at the end, I, for, I forgot to mention from, I, I mentioned from Sicily. Sicily. You were born in... No, America. Born in, in America. America. But my family is Sicilian. Okay. Did you know Marco Corleone? No, no never. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about from <laughs> yes. The Godfather? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now that's right away a big misconception because as soon as you say, uh, uh, you know, people confuse the two, it's a, a Sicilian or Italian, right away people are like, okay, these are the mafia. Yeah. How far is that from the truth? As far as uh, Islam and terrorism is from, from the truth. It, that's yes. a good way to start now. Did the same way, you know, all Italians, Sicilians, whatever. They're not in the mafia, are they? Nope. Muslims aren't terrorists. Nope. Yeah. And you found that out. You went through a whole big journey. Where did you start? Where did the journey start? So, long story short, the way that I came to Islam, of course, eight and a half years into the monastery, everything was good. I had the life. I really did. I had no bills. And, of course, no wife. No kids, none of this stuff. Not in the future, not then, not ever. Because you can't, right? You can't. It's a celibacy. Yeah. You take a vow of poverty, chastity, celibacy, and obedience. And so in that vow of celibacy and chastity, there is no wife or kids. So, but to be honest, because a lot of Muslims, they say to me, you know, how could you do that, you know? But see, the thing is, is that within the Catholic Church, it makes sense. Outside the Catholic Church, it doesn't make sense to live that lifestyle. So I'm living this lifestyle. I'm very comfortable with it. I feel good. I'm feeling positive. Okay. Now, eight and a half years in, one day I had to go to a church uh, near the monastery that I was at. And when I was coming out of the church, I, I, I ran into a Muslim. Not intentionally, just by chance. And when I came out that church, and he was there, and he wasn't waiting, but we just crossed paths. He said to me, you're, you're a Christian. I said, yes. He said, can you help me with something? I said, sure. He said, can you show me where Jesus says I am God? I said, no problem. I've been studying this stuff for eight and a half years. I, 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 th I thrive for these moments. So I open up, I, or sorry, I didn't open up my Bible because I don't have to because it's all in my, in my memory. So I go to different verses of the Bible. Too many for me to quote right now. John 1.1, 1, 1, different, uh, the Father and I are one, before Abraham was, I am, all the God verses, as we would call them in Christianity. So, I spit them off to him, try to give him the context and what they say. And he says to me, and this, this brother actually, come to find out, he was actually an ex-Catholic, or ex-Christian, who was very knowledgeable of the Bible. And he said to me, but that's John saying, you, you, you know, that's John saying Jesus is God, and Paul saying Jesus is God, and, and, and Peter saying, but does Jesus say he's God? So I kind of thought it was funny because I never thought about it. You know, when I accepted the Catholic Church and the Christian belief when I was 17, it was because I was desperate for something, and they told me this is who God was. I didn't think about it. I didn't even want to think about it. I just accepted it. But this was really, maybe it's stupid me, but in eight and a half years, it was the first time I really thought, does he actually say that, does he actually claim this kind of divinity that I give to him? So that night I went home and I really was thinking about it. And as I went through the Bible, my, I was looking for different proofs. I really saw that there is no explicit statement where Jesus himself says in the words that we would say, I am God or worship me, but that everybody else says he's God and worship him. So I met with this brother again. And we started having a dialogue on a regular basis. He gave me a Quran, and we started to dialogue and discuss Christianity and Islam, Mary, Jesus, the saints, everything. Who God is, Trinity, one God, what is it? So we must have kept in contact for probably about three months, going back and forth. I read the Quran cover to cover a couple times. Now, what I learned about Islam when I was, a, when I was studying was three things. And this is important. One false god, two false prophet, three false book. Everything's false. So that's all I believed about it. About Islam. About Islam. That was it. Never anything good. Never anything good. But when I opened up the Quran and I started to read it, I started to see some clarity. I started to see, I started to see who God really is. And that the Quran actually was a con confirmation of the books before and a completion. It was a last testament. And so through that dialogue with, the, with, with this brother, I came to Islam, alhamdulillah, two years ago. Because his arguments against Christianity 
were stronger than my arguments for Christianity. And I even came to a point so much, and I have to give a lot of credit to Ahmed Dida, because, of course, the sheikh who uh, does a lot, of course, deceased, but did a lot of dawah work, because when I learned that he was the main, uh, the main opponent of the Christian in, in, in dawah and in, in trying to prove Jesus isn't God and the, the proof of Islam, I went online and started watching him. Not to become a Muslim, but to hear his arguments and to refute them on my own, to figure out how I could refute them. But what I did was, day after day, week after week, and I had listened to him for quite some time, month after month of listening to him, his arguments really made more sense mm -hmm. than my own arguments. And his influence and his speech really played a positive role um, in me developing into a Muslim. Mm -hmm. And so through Ahmed Dida and through this brother who really opened my eyes, alhamdulillah, to the truth, and you finally accepted Islam. We, we're, accepted we're, Islam. we're out of time. Tell us now, what, what is it uh, that, that you believe now as a Muslim, in short? What, what is it well, that's so drastically different, or is it really that much of a difference? Well, I believe today exactly what Jesus himself taught. Alhamdulillah. That's exactly what I believe. Because the Jesus that I knew before was the Jesus that the church taught me. But when I went and looked at the Jesus himself, who he says he is, I found that was the Muslim Jesus. The Muslim Jesus. The Muslim Jesus. And that that Muslim Jesus spoke of a prophet coming after him, who of course is Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. And he said, when they asked him what's the greatest commandment, he said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God. Worship him. That's it. That's it. Worship the The creator. same message as Muhammad, the same message as all the prophets, the same message as Moses. And that same Jesus who, like Muhammad, like the prophets, that same Jesus who fell down in the agony in the garden and put his forehead on that ground. And, that's and worship you, God. And that's how you pray today. That's how I pray today.